Just a few short months ago, these cables were all cleaned up, but after adding and removing equipment, it just turned into a mess. So it's time for another cable management video. First things first, let's pull this guy out and that's what we have to deal with, which honestly, I've seen worse, but it's definitely bad enough that I wanted to clean it up. We had some broken zip ties just from adding other gear in. So the first thing I did in did is just go in and start undoing the 5,000 zip ties holding things together. I also made some uh, mistakes the first time I did this by bundling cables together and zip tying them. And uh, sometimes you can do that, but um, I think really what you want to do is bundle each cable on its own. And then if you have to kind of wrap them together or Velcro them, it's a little easier to, you know, change things up later. Um, so this was, uh, yeah, just a, just a mess. So I'm just undoing things, pulling it back out, trying to reroute it. I also have, man, how many? Three power strips are mounted to the underside of the top of the TV stand. So I've got cables, uh, power cables running to all of that. I also have signal cables running very close to the power cables, which is kind of a no-no. But when you're in tight quarters like this, sometimes you don't really have a choice. I've not noticed any problems with electromagnetic interference, but I guess uh, in some ways I'm kind of asking for it. So here's a new thing that I started using is these little zip tie, uh, they're plastic with 3M adhesive on the back, 3M uh, double-sided foam tape. So what you do is you tape that to your surface, then you can run zip ties through in either direction, which is kind of nice. So you can run them in a 90 degree angle if you want. You probably can do both at the same time, although I didn't do that in this one. And uh, tucking some more cables away. Then I'm moving on to the center of this. That's an ethernet cable. Um, yeah, so besides just undoing the mess that was there and then bundling individual cables, I also did a lot of rerouting. Because over time, as you're adding and taking things away, the the routing just gets into, it's just, it's like a woven blanket or something. Maybe it's not quite that bad, but it's a mess. Uh, so yeah, high speed to save you the agony of just watching this in real time. But you can see it's starting to get cleaned up, at least over here on the left side. I, the, on the first version reason you see that impact come out is I had some uh, zip ties that have the little mounting hole and I was using that to kind of anchor things to the TV stand which that worked pretty well but these little adhesive clips mounting tabs mounting brackets whatever you want to call them I think are a better option they're a little cleaner and way easier to kind of cut a zip tie and run a new zip tie through if you ever need to so there I am feeding the zip tie through one of those mounting tabs. I've got, I think, three running along this side of the TV stand on the top to kind of hold things together and uh, get over to the power strip that's on the far end to my left. And that's just another Ethernet cable. And just trying to make this all go. And um, I tied that zip tie very loose at first just to hold the bundle of cables which i'm glad i did because then i realized immediately <laughs> that this iec for my direct drive wheel i wanted to reroute it and luckily i was able to fit the plug in through there no problem and then once i was reasonably sure that there wasn't anything else i needed to run through here i could pull it tight and get it kind of sucked up toward the top uh, that's the power cable for that sound bar. And uh, so it's, you know, bundled up nice and shorter than, uh, you know, a normal cable that's just kind of falling all over. So adding a few more zip ties and I'm kind of cutting off or twisting off the zip ties, my preferred method. 
Although you sometimes still end up with a little sharp, sharp uh, end sticking out. The other thing I've found that works though, is if you take a Bic lighter or something and just kind of heat up that plastic just enough to soften it, and then you can kind of just press it in with your thumb and usually that works. So adding a few more zip ties here, a few more zip tie mounting uh, brackets and that side's pretty well cleaned up so now we're moving over to the other side again some more of those uh, mounting zip ties just getting that all of the way that black cable that's running uh, left to right mostly horizontally is the coax cable going to my router which i kind of need to leave that one free and then you can see the thin line the thin wire that's going to the sound bar is an optical that comes from the TV. And both of those were distance wise. I didn't have a whole lot to play with. And um, an optical, you can't really bend and try to, uh, you know, get too rough with it or you'll, you'll ruin it. Uh, coax as well. I just, um, just had enough. So I decided as long as I can get this stuff to all sort of uh, disappear from the front side, that was my main goal. I wasn't really trying to make this look like a, circuit board on the back side just trying to get it to be mostly invisible from the front side so uh, that's another recent addition there is that white cable those two white cables are going to two mac minis that are in the front of the tv stand one of the mac minis is my plex media server that i've been using for quite a while and then i recently added a second Mac Mini running Windows uh, so that I can use that for software called SimHub that I use for my sim racing rig. It provides uh, haptics. It's the software that runs the haptics on my sim racing rig. Struggled with that. So this power supply is what um, powers up my Class D uh, power amp that runs the transducer. So I do use some of that uh, 3M dual lock tape. It's similar to Velcro, but it's a little sturdier, I find. For applications like this, it works really well. And then because it's, you know, two-sided Velcro-esque, you can remove it if you need to. I think in this case, there was, you know, not a whole lot of uh, need to be removing this thing but man do i struggle with getting the paper off the <laughs> the uh, dual lock tape and the 3m foam tape all of it but anyway so i finally get that off and uh what are we doing here oh another uh zip lock or excuse me zip tie uh mount adhesive mount and that one's going to go on the back of the tv stand to pull a lot of those cables together, which are all sort of individually bundled. But now this, I'm hoping anyway, holds them all the way behind that uh, TV stand so you can't see from the front. Then I had these cables, they're kind of drooping down. I decided let's uh, use another zip tie mount, put it on the top side and run a zip tie through just to kind of take the weight off all of that. and pull those cables up so it's not a huge difference but it is it does make a difference a significant or visible difference from the front side then i've got uh these cables are also going to the haptics for my sim racing rig they weren't really too long but i decided to bundle them up here a little bit using those little thin zip ties one thing i've noticed with the real thin zip ties if you use those I do not pull them tight with the pliers because they will break about 50% of the time. The heavy duty or you know more normal type zip ties you can you can pull pretty tight with the pliers and and really get it squeezed tight. So most of the cabling now is done, and I just had a big pile of zip tie remnants and leftover drywall screws and 3M paper left over. So then I noticed. This is coming together, but that thing was bothering me. So that flexible plastic tube for hiding cables. So I took it to the garage, found some paint I happened to have, and uh, we made it white. 
uh, thinking that it would blend in much better with the off-white wall. Then I moved over to the router while I let that dry. And that's the coax cable that's coming from the wall going to the cable router. And then I have uh, some Ethernet cables going to the router, one going to the switch, one going directly to the PS5. And uh, then the power cable to that subwoofer, which is actually a Bluetooth subwoofer, so that's the only cable going to it. And then we twist those zip ties off there, twist them off in the back, and then it's just that coax cable. And I ended up using, um, I had some of those zip tie mounting tabs uh, underneath the top of the TV stand. But I really wanted to get these to stick right to that little edge. So I took the, um, the mounting tabs and kind of sliced off sections because it was as it was it was too big to really fit on that edge it would hang over quite a bit so i cut it down so that uh on diagonally and that let me kind of get two of them right on the edge uh, but first we got to get the coax line hidden underneath the top of the tv stand and once that was in place, these worked pretty well. But to be perfectly honest, a few days later, they popped off. Um, so I'm going to have to go back and revisit that. These little uh, adhesive tabs do also have holes for running a screw through. So I might do that. But man, this TV stand is pretty thin particle board, laminated particle board. And I'm not sure I trust drilling holes and trying to use that structurally too much but here i am cutting that mounting tab and got it to physically fit in that space so you couldn't see it but unfortunately as i mentioned it did come off a couple of days later i think the tension from that coax line is just uh it was just pulling on it but at least for this day it was a win uh, so pull the zip tie tight there on the bottom and one on the top and we're pretty much pretty much done just got to clip these guys off get those out of the way and then we can uh marvel at the handiwork here so this is before i put that plastic tube back so it's looking much better but that i think was a was a win doing the white plastic tube painting it and then um you know using it to cover those lines all those lines that are in that tube feed up to the tv and uh, here you go. So from like normal, you know, sitting height and being in the living room there, it's pretty well hidden. I'm, I duck down pretty low so you can see what the reality of it is. That's the center. Uh, so probably could clean those cables up a little bit as well. But um, really, when you're just in the room, you see almost no cables now. And with that white uh, flexible tube, that really blends in so much better um and then that's a tv antenna amplifier on the bottom which i might actually uh hide that guy in the wall we'll see well there you go much cleaner